Okay, we're going to go ahead and get um, going. And this being the um, last session, session number four, about um, data gaps. And um, so I would really appreciate it if you guys could, um, could come in and get seated and we can get started um, for this session. It's a great pleasure to introduce the moderator for this session, Joe Rodericks, who is a member of the organizing committee for this meeting. Joe Rodericks is the founding principal of Environ, an internationally recognized expert in toxicology and risk analysis, and um, somebody who also um, has a considerable experience in a number of areas related to the Food and Drug Administration, including pharmaceuticals, medical devices, um, consumer products and foods, as well as in other areas such as occupational chemicals and environmental contaminants. And uh, so thank you, um, Joe, for your um, role in helping us organize this meeting and for moderating this session. Okay, we're getting people back. <clears throat> Thank you, Lynn. I'm <clears throat> this session, the last session for our meeting is on the subject of data gaps. So I mean, I might start by daring to say that there is probably, other than certain nutrients, there's probably no food ingredient that's been more heavily studied than caffeine. So why are there, are there still data gaps after all of that? Um, well, FDA has some questions uh, that we're part of the reason for coming together here is to see which remaining, whether there are remaining significant scientific uncertainties in our knowledge of caffeine and its health effects. Uh, I can, they've put before us a number of questions, a fairly large number of questions. I think I can summarize them and I'd like the panel to, to focus on these questions. You may have other comments as well. Uh, but the general questions, one having to, I'll put in the general risk assessment framework, uh, where it's useful to look at data gaps under the question of whether there are, for example, health effects, adverse health effects of caffeine, either from acute or chronic exposure that remain uh, to be studied, that are not significantly well defined, that we need further study. That's sort of the hazard section of a risk assessment. Whether there are dose response issues that need further elaboration on this question, again, in on an acute or chronic basis. We'd like to hear about that to the extent you can comment. Um, whether we have an adequate understanding of population variability. We've talked about vulnerable populations. I use the term, the risk parlance is typically population variability in response, and how, how dose-response relationships uh, vary uh, in the population. That has to be taken into account in looking at any safety evaluation. The question of uh, interactions among ingredients in various beverages containing caffeine is one that FDA has asked about. What can we say about that? <clears throat> And finally, issues of intake, because uh, that's, that's an essential component of any full safety assessment. Are the remaining issues regarding intake or exposure that need to be examined? Uh, I, I would add one thing onto that, too. We've heard some uh, remarks this morning from Mark Freely from Canada about levels of safe intake that they are thinking about, and if there are some responses to that. Uh, I don't think we heard any this morning, Mark from the audience, but that would be something also helpful for FDA, I'm pretty sure. So we have a panel to try to answer, begin answer these questions. We've probably heard a lot of, uh, a lot already uh, on questions that I have just raised, but we're gonna try to consolidate thinking, if we can, if that's possible, uh, through the help of this panel. Uh, and what we've heard about both the significant data gaps in those areas and if we can, what kinds of studies, what kinds of studies would be helpful to, to uh, fill those data gaps? Uh, to, to, I'm gonna ask the panel to be as specific as you can on this and of course succinct. 
All of the panelists, I would say, have been introduced to you except one. We have one new member of the team here, Reagan Bailey. Uh, you put up your, did you put up your hand? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> she is from uh, a nutritional epidemiologist at uh, the Office of Dietary Supplements, Office of Disease Prevention. That sounds like a good thing. At the NIH. And she's also an adjunct professor in the Department of Foods and Nutrition at Purdue University. So we're going to go through, ask each of the panelists to give some remarks on these issues or anything else, of course, you want to raise having to do with data gaps or research. Now, I, I know that when you ask research scientists to offer opinions on research needs, the discussion can go on forever. <laughs> so I'm going to limit the discussion to six minutes per panelist. And then we'll open it up for comments this time from the audience on the, what you've heard from the panelists or any other ideas about research needs. So is that, is that OK? OK. Um, so again, six minutes. Yes, OK. So who wants to start? I don't care who starts. Uh, we, we can go in alphabetical order. I think that's what we have here. <laughs> Amelia, do you want to begin?